Sony, Sony Sports Report, sitting here with the man, Keith. One time. Thurman. Thanksgiving weekend, Tampa, Florida. It's beautiful here, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's beautiful. The weather's great. We've had a great weekend. Yeah, and also, special weekend for uh, Keith one time. He's one more year uh, senior, 25 years old. How's it feel, Keith? Just feels like another day, you know, a little older, a little wiser. Don't let the beard fool you guys. Baby face underneath. <laughs> Lots of experience upstairs. So let's talk about it. December 14th, the Alamo Dome, San Antonio, Texas, as we say down south. Uh, big card, Brona Maidana. Nothing but action coming up. Thurman Jr., Soto Carras. Let's talk about it a little bit. Jesus Soto Carras, he had the Aiden win, the Maidana loss, then came back on Birdo uh, <laughs> with revenge. Birdo went down 12th round after Soto Carras was down on the canvas in the 11th round. Soto Carras, to me, when I watch him as a fighter, you know, he's one that digs it out of the heart at the right time. Isn't always like a boxer, but willing to go to, if he has to box, if he has to punch. But you truly say, I am a boxer and I am a puncher. I can put it together in a combo platter for you anytime you want. I can go inside when I want. I can go outside. You don't know what my game plan is going to be when I come into the fight. Having watched Soto Karras in those last three fights that we just mentioned, what's your game plan going in? To be the faster, smarter, and, you know, the hard hitter in the fight. Uh, Soto, like you said, he pulls out a lot of heart, you know, and he makes sure that you did your training camp because, you know, um, some people thought that I Adon, Adin or uh, whatnot was going to uh, be able to pull out the victory. But it just shows you how Soto is one of those guys that you don't want to go in underestimating. You know, so we're in here. You got us at the gym. You see, you know, we're about to put in the work and uh, put in the rounds real quick. And, you know, we're just getting ready for the 14th, man. You know, um, boxing my whole life since I was seven years old. Boxing is my passion. It's my dream. This is where I want to be. And I'm looking forward to closing out this year, December 14th, with Soto Carras in San Antonio, Texas. Hey, Keith, one thing I've noticed about you in our uh, former interviews, you don't boast a lot about I'm going to come in and I'm going to pow, 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 you know, the power punch it down thing. Um, a lot of times you'll say, you know, I don't know. I'm going to go in. I'm going to plop my, you know, I've heard this from you. I'm going to go in. I'm going to see what happens. You know, same thing from Dan. I know how you guys operate. This fight in particular, I've been listening to you, although I am media, I listen to other things that you say in the media, and I've been hearing you talk about bringing the rain, bringing the thunder. Why this fight? Now, the last fight, uh, well, okay, let's, let's go down your resume a little bit. We had Quintana went down crushing body blow, fourth round. Okay, that was just almost a year ago. November 2012. Yeah, uh, almost to the mark. Uh, then, nice birthday gift. <laughs> and then we cruised on into March, and we saw uh, Jan Zavik took you the distance, made you a better fighter, grittier fighter, taught you some lessons in the ring. I thought it was great that you went those 12 rounds, and it was a beautiful fight to watch. Then we went down to July. Boy, you were chomping at the bit. And Diego Chavez succumbed in the ninth round. Where are you now as you come now and you're talking about throwing punches? How'd your mentality come from? I don't know. I'll see to now. I hear a, a different confidence in your voice. You know, my motto is and always has been and will continue to be chaos for life. You know, I mentioned in the Diego Chavez fight that I was very disappointed that I did perform for 12 rounds, even though it was a uh, beautifully executed boxing. I left unsatisfied because I didn't get a knockout. So at the post-conference, I let everybody know that Keith Thurman is a knockout fiend, that I'm always fiending for the knockout. And if I don't get a knockout, then it's just a matter of time that I'm going to need I'm, I'm gonna need my fix. You know, so I like to have my fix right away. And December 14th is uh, my next date. 
And that's exactly what I wanted to hear. And that's exactly why I called you out so you could call me out so that I could hear that fire and that voice. That's what we're talking about here, folks. And that's why I come to the St. Pete Boxing Gym so we, that we get the real deal. So specifically, anything changed in the preparation for the fight? Uh, not really. Uh, my changes were just made back when I became a 12-round fighter. You know, you just have to train a certain way and prepare yourself for the full 12 rounds. And we do that every single day. You know, we put in um, our, our morning and our evening workouts. And I'm just real confident, you know. I mean, don't, uh, don't fix it if it's not broken. And our, our routines are golden. You know, I've been uh, coming in shape, performing. Um, I feel like I've been in better shape than all my opponents um, to date. So, you know, I'm looking forward to this. And, you know, we got, we got about... 15 more days or so and we're going to grind it out we're going to go hard and you know give everyone a great performance december 14th 21 and 0 19 ko's uh soto cross 28 8 3 18 ko's you know he's looking to match you in that ko division and you're looking to just keep on rolling down the road uh what's going to be the uh Hmm. what are you going to do to mitigate that heart that we talked about in soto cross once we get in there, is it the knockout fiend mentality? Is it just that, you know, pure will? What's going to happen so that you make your mark as opposed to him making his mark? It's a big stage. It's a big fight night. Well, like you guys saw on the last fight, you know, I'll bang and I'll box. And I love going in there and testing their chin and testing their body right off bat, seeing if they can, if they can take uh, what I deliver. And... You know, Soto's a real tough dude, but if I don't break him down with the power early on, I'm going to break him down with my boxing mentality, my skills, and uh, I plan on frustrating him to the point to where the knockout would become easier in the later rounds. I'm definitely looking forward to another knockout, another KO victory. We're not looking forward to hearing that final bell ring. So, you know, don't blink. Come enjoy the show. It's, it's the last one of the year, and I am just guarantee you a great one. Stepping stone for Mayweather in the thought process? You know, Mayweather is the golden ticket of the Walter Waite division. Um, you know, he's the man. I mean, Floyd picks his own fights. Everybody knows that. He's the man. He's, he's wearing the crown. He's the king of the division. He picks his own fights. But there's a lot of young talent who's fighting for an opportunity to get in the ring with him. I do consider myself one. I do consider myself a worthy opponent of Mayweather's. And, you know, we'll just have to see. I got to take out a few more people. I got to shake up the world of boxing a little bit more for a little bit longer duration of time. But hopefully it's a fight that can be made before he uh, bows out and just passes the torch on to the younger generation. What I appreciate about Keith One Time Thurman is that uh, he has stated it before and in every interview pretty much that I've had with him and in other interviews that boxing is what has made him a better man. So uh, what we surmise from this, number one, boxing is just not about getting in the ring and fighting. It's about becoming a better person, period. So Keith One Time, um, how... Do you continue to develop and evolve? Okay, you're only 25 years old, but you uh, honestly, you know, you speak of a man uh, way with wisdom way beyond your years, and we've spoken about that. What continues to motivate you and push you to become a better man and not just become bored in the ring? Because it's easy to throw the one-two punch in the straight right and the overhand left and, and do the do every day, but not evolve as a person. What drives you to do that? The simple desire to be a better fighter. You know, it's been my lifelong dream to be one of the greats in this ring. Um, I've been working hard. We're going on 18 years now, and it's just been a journey. You know, it's been a journey, and it's a slow process. And just like you said, I'm 25. Naturally, growing up, I'm, I'm aging. I'm, I'm growing. I'm getting older. I'm learning more day, day in and day out. And boxing is just like a conduit of growth. You know, it just um, helps me develop as a man and as a fighter. And uh, being a fighter is a part of the man who I am. So I, I need I need to develop both in the ring and outside of the ring. And we're doing it one step at a time, one fight at a time, one day at a time. 
with all due respect to the legendary uh, trainer, Ben Getty, and due respect to now Chris Getty, who's working with you on, on, on the training team now, what makes it work with Dan Birmingham? Well, the history. You know, Dan um, accepted me and Ben Getty into his gym back when I was 14 years old. And he was um, shortly after that in the ring working on the mitts with me and helping me and Ben develop um, our skills together. Um, he's just been around. He understands me. He understands my background because he understands uh, where I come from and my roots with Ben Getty. And there's no other trainer out there who understands me like Dan. Um. When I did my first interview with you in here, Keith, um, I had some uh, inferior equipment, and uh, it, it was a really loud day in the gym, uh, a lot of boxing, boxing going on in the gym, and you were not at the status that you are now. We could hardly get our interview done. I would like to point out now that E.F. Hutton could be speaking in the room because it's silence. Silence equals respect. Respect, because one time's in the gym, and it's fight time. Won't take up any more of your time, Keith. It's been a pleasure as usual. Hey, you heard what he said. Don't blink. Sony Sports Report is bringing you this. Look for it on Jeff Mayweather's in, uh, ProBoxingInsider.com, also U.S. correspondent for the British site, LiveFight.com. It's going down. Alamo Dome, San Antonio, Texas. Broner, my Dana, on the main card. Uh, Keith. One time. Thurman, Jesus Soto Cras, on the co-main event. Showtime, December 14th. Be watching. This is Sony Sports Report, and that's where it happens. You concerned about your fan base building up? He said, no, because fight by fight, they will see, and I don't have to do anything extra for that. You're right. Talk about that. No, you're right. you're exactly right. You know, it, 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 how he performs in the ring is going to, you know, bring fans because he's an exciting fighter. You know, everybody, you know, like he says, don't blink because it can end in a second. You know, that's just the type of fighter he is. He's always been brought up that way. And one important thing he was always taught was never leave it in the hands, hands of the judges at all for you know at all cost you know always try and end the fight you know before it goes to 12 rounds eight rounds 10 rounds whatever it is you know because you know you look nowadays a lot of people are getting you know bad bad decisions you know just like the mayweather fight his last fight they had it a, you know one fight had it a draw come on now wow. you know and he's the biggest in the game yeah. you know so it can happen to anybody so he speaks with his fists yeah, I got yeah. Dan Birmingham. He is the man, as I've told you before, with the plan. And uh, what's the plan for December 14th, Dan? Don't, don't give me the same stuff. You know, Sony Sports Report, I want something fresh, something good. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we're facing a real tough guy in Soto Karras, and uh, Keith's going to be in great shape. He already is in great shape and boxing 12 rounds every other day for weeks now, and we're ready to go. You're going to see a brilliant Keith Thurman, as usual. You know, I was explaining to Sony how uh, early on in my career, she got a sneak peek at the sparring here. She got to see the, the footwork and the side-to-side -side movement that we're working with. So I, I explained to her that it was in my nature to be a fighter, okay? And that if it's in your nature to be a fighter, like early on in an amateur career, if you are developing a strong fighter, Later on in his career, that fighter, throughout time, hard work, and dedication, can learn to box. Boxing is a skill and a technique. But if you have a boxer, someone who has been boxing since they were an amateur and continues to perfect their boxing skills as a pro, I feel that it's harder to turn a boxer into a fighter. If it is not your first instinct to be a fighter, then you will never be a fighter. And you will always be an outside boxer. It takes a certain kind of mentality to sit down in the pocket and feel comfortable going toe-to-toe -to -toe with another man. So like I said, a fighter can learn to become a boxer, but a boxer cannot learn to become a fighter. Yeah! San Antonio! Here he comes. 219 punches. 219. Back at you. That's trouble for harass. 